This is a Google My Business profile panel. Um, there's probably nobody better than Roman and I to teach this. You know, like I said, a lot of you guys who are currently on Google Business Profile kind of have early adopter success. So as Google My Business, my profile becomes more prominent, more local businesses, more notaries, like everyone in here, is to start flooding it. You really gotta make sure you know how to optimize your Google business profile. Of course, we're gonna give you a bunch of ninja tricks, things that most people don't know because Roman is an SEO expert. Uh, so with that being said, let's get the party started. Who's ready to learn how to maximize, optimize their Google business profile? Nice. Nice, so today we're gonna to learn how to be found on Google and get free customers. And the important word is free. The reason why I wanna kinda of emphasize that is there's very few ways to market your business and get free customers. Getting a customer through an advertisement on Facebook can cost you $50, $100. So anytime you can get free customers, it's something that you wanna kinda of pay attention to and put some time and effort into. So by the end of this training, you're gonna know how to be found online using free Google business profiles so you can get more customers and have a more profitable business. So today you're gonna to learn the goal of your Google business profile, the four key factors that can boost your Google business profile so you can be in that three pack, uh, how to set up your Google business profile, and what you should do every week to optimize your Google business profile to be number, the number one search result. So we're gonna give you some action items. We're gonna give you some real world ways to make sure that you kind of keep climbing that ranking to get in that Google three pack. By the way, the Google three pack is the top three listings shown on the map on the first page of Google. And what's the importance of that? Well, because when you're in the three pack, you get the majority of clicks in there and in fact, if there's a thousand searches of notary near me in your area, and that's somebody right now in San Diego searching notary near me, like right now, this moment. So if there's a thousand searches and you're that number one spot, you're gonna get 250 clicks to your website for free. This is exactly why you wanna optimize and do these steps here that we're gonna be talking about. And it's not just any leads, these are intent-based leads. So what does that mean? It means that they're already taking action, opening up their laptop, going to Google, and searching notary near me, which means that the next step, once they find a notary, what are they gonna do? They're gonna call them, they're gonna hire them, right? So they intend to get the service. This is opposed to interruption marketing, which is like social media, Facebook, those type of things. That's, you know, you're scrolling, you're checking out what your friends are doing, and then you might see an ad. Generally speaking, when they intend to move forward, intent-based leads, it's a better, higher quality lead that will likely do business with you. Interruption marketing is a little different and a lot of times they don't take action. So, what are the primary factors to get into the Google three pack? Well, let's take a look at what Google says. Google says, this is their uh, profile, their, their help desk, um, and it says local results are based primarily on relevance, distance, and prominence. So, the, the challenge with marketing is that a lot of times there's this vernacular that's not necessarily everybody knows. So what does relevance mean? What does prominence mean? Well, in this little presentation, we're not gonna call it generally relevance or prominence because if that doesn't mean a whole lot. We're gonna break it down to words and to principles that we can understand. So, what are the factors? The first, let's talk about relevance. What does relevance mean? If I Google notary near me, Google just wants to know that you are relevant, that Google should show your business. So how does Google know when somebody types in notary near me? Well, as you can see here, they have notary public chosen as their business. They have the word notary inside of their business. And so that is what shows relevance. And so what is that? Those are keywords. So relevance is keywords. The second thing is distance. So that one's pretty easy, proximity to the prospective customer. The third is a little bit more, there's a little bit more to it. So the third is prominence. And prominence has two primary factors. The first is reviews. You can see those reviews here. This, this UPS store is getting a 3.6 star rating. First Choice Notary is getting a 4.9 star rating. But it's interesting because UPS store has a lower review rating than First Choice Notary. So what's the difference? Well, it's the second part mm -hmm. of prominence, right? And that's online presence. And you that's can. your website that we went over, he went over so perfectly yesterday. And so a lot of you guys have the earlier adopter advantages because you're mainly focusing on your reviews 
But this is a classic example of how more reviews doesn't mean higher search results in GBP. So when you really want to make sure that your page stands out from anyone else in your community, it's focusing on the website. And this is literally proof of it, right? So many of you guys are only focused on reviews. Mm -hmm. Loan signing system, conference attendees realize it's both kind of talking to each other and making sure that. So that training yesterday, you need to take that serious. Mm -hmm. Some of you guys are just focused on reviews and you're getting success because you're early adopters. That won't always be the case in the next year or two. So you gotta make sure you're applying everything that you learned this weekend. That's right, and, and, and it's a good point. That leads to the next point, which you could see is that you might ask yourself, how do you compete with UPS, their online presence, right? The answer is you can when you do focus on your website. So if you look at just by reviews alone, you would think that First Choice Notary should be above UPS Store. We now know that web presence is very important. And so whenever you do have those things, here's another example. Similar example, if you take a look at this, La Jolla Mobile Notary has a five-star review, UPS Store has a four-star review, but it's a similar disparity to the previous slide of the two. UPS Store actually has 30 reviews compared to 15, but La Jolla Mobile Notary is ranked above the UPS Store. And why is that? Well, because if you look at their website, they have a professional website. It's not as good as a template you guys are gonna get, but it's, <laughs> it's, good. it's good, it's good, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> so now we're gonna pull out then, instead of three factors, we're gonna pull out that online presence because it's that important. So what is online presence? Well, you're gonna go ahead and start your Google profile, business profile, but at the hub of that is your website. And then all of the other things, Yelp, Thumbtack, Facebook business, that's all a contributing factor to your online presence. What is this important is Google is putting their, their web into these other platforms. So your presence isn't just having a website. So I want to make sure that wasn't lost. Yes. So presence means, do you have a Thumbtack page? Do you have a Yelp page? Do you have a Facebook business page? So Google's spiders are crawling. So part of their pre uh, uh, online presence is not just your website, but you also have other online presences in other places. That's all building your authority. Does that make sense? So you don't only want to get super factored in on Google Business Profile, because if you're only factored in GBP, but your competition has all the other ones, their online presence is greater than yours. Does that make sense? And Google is going through it. There are spiders and saying, okay, who? Because Google is trying to figure out who is the most prominent uh, what authority, mm -hmm. and that's what's showing. So I was wondering if that wasn't lost here. So you should have those four um, at, the, uh, at the minimum, and the more you have, the more presence you have on the internet, and Google senses that. Yeah, exactly. You almost want to look at it like you're advertising to Google. You know? <laughs> that's a good way of saying <laughs> it. You know? <laughs> so, so the four primary factors, keywords, online presence, reviews, distance. The good news is that you can impact every single one of these pieces. Okay, and we're gonna go over that right now. So how do you get in the Google three pack? Step one, you gotta set up your Google business profile. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail here. I'm just gonna cover on this, on setting up your Google business profile. There's so many tutorials online that you can just go online and, and, and go through that. But I'm gonna go over kind of the key elements as a mobile notary that you wanna make sure that you touch on. The first is just go to google.com slash business. That's where you go sign up. Okay, and as we go through this, I'm gonna kind of point to this here. This means online presence. This is our key here. As soon as you set up that Google business profile, your online presence improves, right? You wanna add your business name. If you have a keyword in your business name, you're going to be more relevant in Google's eyes than if you don't have a keyword. So if you have California Notary, which by the way, both of those are keywords. One's a location and one's the business that you're in. Someone might Google Notary in California or California Notary. Uh, if you have those in, it's better than if you don't have any keywords at all, okay? So to the extent that you can put a keyword in your business name, do it. Okay, you wanna add your business category, Notary Public, that one's easy. And then you wanna add your location. So since you're a mobile notary and since your services can be in a variety of places, you actually don't want to put yes on your address. You can actually expand your service area. So choose the different counties and cities where you'll go serve. Uh, then you wanna, of course, add your website to improve your online presence. And then Google's gonna verify your business. Add your services to improve relevance. So if you, as you can see, once you put in Notary Public, you have all of these different options here that you can add. That's gonna improve the amount of keywords where Google can find you so they can send your business to other people looking for you. 
and then expand your hours of operations to improve relevance. So if, if somebody searches for a notary at 8 p.m. and Google has a choice of somebody that's open and somebody that's closed, well, they're going to show somebody that's open because Google wants you to take action right away. Google wants to show that that's actually a small part of relevance is your hours of operation. Just like Snapdocs, you want to have all of the different features on. You want to fill it out completely. You want to turn on messaging, add a keyword rich description. Google reads everything. They hear everything. They're listening to us right now. So make sure that your, <laughs> your keywords are in your description. When you add it to the description, as you can see here, here's an example. San Diego Notary Services is a notary public based in San Diego County. We provide mobile notary services. There's probably 10 keywords in that description alone. So make sure that you do that. You almost need to sound redundant. Now, the redundancy, uh, you think some people back in like the 90s would just put notary services 27,000 times and Google got hip to it. So the point is, make sure you're redundant and that makes sense. So you That's can, right. So you all make sure it's in a sentence, but you can redundantly say notary public over and over. Like, so Google isn't, for some of you guys, well, like, I'll just put notary public 27 That's times. That's right. Doesn't work. So make sure you're doing it in, in sentences like this um, to make sure that they know that you're just not trying to beat the system. It's a great point. As part of your online presence, make sure that everything matches. Don't change the name of your business just because you want to add a keyword. Okay, because of like the name of your business should match what's on your website, should match what's on all of the different profiles. Again, what Mark said, sp Google spiders are crawling everywhere, and so they want to match that up, make sure it's good. Mm -hmm. So you want to make like your business hours are 24 hours on Google, this should be 24 hours on Yelp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your job is to make sure all the profiles are matching or consistent, is a better word. And you should have all these at the minimum, They're by the minimum. way or you're gonna get outranked by someone who only is focused on Google Business Profile. There's something we say at Loan Signing System all the time internally with marketing. It's uh, when there, whenever there's confusion, the answer is always no. And so if I go to one profile and it says you're open 24 hours, but then I go to another and it says you're only open eight hours a day, then you know, I'm just like, oh wait, what is it? You know, I'm a little confused. Well, Google's smart, so Google's <laughs> matching that up too. And so they're, they're basically, you don't wanna confuse Google either. Make sure all of those things match up. So. How do you optimize your Google business profile so you can get in that three pack? Let's go over five things. Of course, I'm holding a clicker, so I'm holding up three. Don't worry about that. <laughs> five things that you could do every single week to make sure that you're in that Google three pack. So number one, got to get those reviews. We saw that. We saw how impactful that was, right? Positive reviews are Marketing assets. Why are they marketing assets? Because they work for you. You get a review once, it works for you for the next weeks, months, years. Nine out of 10 people look at reviews before making a decision. How many people look at reviews when they go on Amazon before they make a decision? Imagine somebody Googling notary near me. They find you on Google Business Profile. They see those five-star reviews and that sways them to you. Again, that's a free prospective customer that could cost you $50 to $100. Uh, Real quick before you go to the slide, I, I, again, I, I think showing the journey is important because the website's so big, because sometimes they will call you directly from your Google Business Profile. Most people go to the website to gild more authority. That's why yesterday's training was so important. The website is a sales page. So now the marketing funnel is Google, GBP to your website. So if they're here to here, you now need to sell them even harder. That's why it's so important to follow what we taught yesterday. Because if they go to your website and you're still not selling them and they bounce, it hurts your authority, but more importantly, you don't get that phone call. So again, I just want to make sure we tie in yesterday's training. That's why we Great did the point. website first versus GBP yesterday, because they're going to go to your website. And if you're not talking to them in a sales format, you're going to lose that phone call. So how do we generate more reviews? 